There we go. I'm recording now just just to keep it from turning off. So what's your guys' preference? So I typically invite people to ask questions as we go along, but I, it's up to you all how you want to want to do that. That's fine. Okay. I have no preference. <laughs> I'm just winging it at everybody. Well, we've got it for what, an hour? It's an hour and a half. It's an hour and a half. Yeah. Okay. I don't think they might come in here. Oh. But no, I mean for the seminar. Oh, for, for the, the seminar. seminar. Yeah, hour and a half total hour today. Rex, since you know everyone more um, in the office, do you think they're going to freak out if I have them at least introduce themselves? Oh, in our office? Mm -hmm. well, well, no. Anytime you make them stand up for anybody, they're not happy. But I mean, yeah, you go ahead and do it. Okay. And I think it's silly if I introduce them when they're sitting here. Oh, you want me to introduce them? No, I mean, they could, I feel like they could introduce themselves. Oh, yeah. It's going to be... Mm -hmm. And Cece will be here, so I'll have her okay. introduce herself. Okay. Are we timing it? I can't. Hey Siri, set a timer. For how long? Sorry. Hey Siri, turn on the stopwatch. Ready? There we go. Hello everyone. Welcome. Thank you for coming to our data seminar. Um, this is our first one of two that will be held this week. Um, first thing we wanted to do was just let you know who all um, is in our Office of Institutional Research. They're all here today and we'll have them introduce themselves. I'm Rex Baumhold, uh, Assistant Director, System Analyst. Um, we currently are in the search process for the Assistant Director of Statistical Data Analysis. Um, program Analyst Cecil Land. No, he's not going to be here. I'm Vanessa Bledsoe, Research Analyst. And I'm Katie Dykes, Administrative Assistant. And then Eric. Oh, and I'm Eric. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going through here real fast. I keep seeing the vacancies. I'm Mary Catcher, uh, technical analyst for academic advising. And we also have one other vacancy that we are currently searching for, another programmer analyst. Uh, so one of the first things we wanted to do was just let you know what the Office of Institutional Research does. So these are the um, main points. The first main part of our responsibility is um, data reporting, and so mainly through IHL and IPEDS. That's a year-round process that we are always doing. Some of y'all we might be um, using your data for. Um, data request, um, that's any request that you all as a, a campus community member might submit to us, whether that's from a school or an individual office. Um, so that could be for accreditation, it could be an ad hoc um, report that you're interested in knowing how many of your students um, may have 
been retained or persisted from a particular semester, or you want the email addresses, stuff like that. Um, we also do national surveys, so like US News, um, others like that. We are um, the ones that collect all of that information. We do um, put out the course evaluations, textbook surveys, grade distributions, and excerpt surveys. And then um, Eric, who introduced himself, he is over the academic module updating. So there are a couple um, different definitions that we want to um, just make sure that everyone is aware of. Um, and I'm going to have a handout for them, so we'll just have that, I'll have that with me. Um, so we'll have the difference between official and unofficial. Then we'll go through headcount, duplicated and unduplicated, um, first time, full time, um, primary student major versus all student majors, and then the difference between the different um, years. Um, we find that when data requests are put in through our office that these are some um, confusing terms when we want to make sure that we get you all the right data the first time and not necessarily have to constantly contact. Um, so the question um, some of y'all have asked before coming here and even probably even sitting here today is what type of data do you enter? So I was going to ask them to tell me what types of data they enter. Um, so with all of that data that's being entered, um, whether that's in um, SOAR or any other type of um, platform, um, data quality is very important. Um, and so you could, you could do a lot of research on data quality and one thing that you'll find is there's six main components when it comes to that and so we just want to run through those real quick. The first one is um, it's really important that data is complete, um, meaning that all the fields that are required are filled out. So um, an important thing would be that optional fields would still make it complete. So an example might be middle name. So if there's a particular um, Data, field, data set that you're completing and middle name is optional, even if all the middle names are not there, it is still complete. So it would still adhere to that part of data quality. The next one is consistency. So making sure that all of the records reflect the same information. So the example would be that a Mississippi resident should have Mississippi as the state. Um, that could be something that we catch in an edit report that Rex will talk about later that um, a student might be a Mississippi resident but might be coded as like Louisiana or something that wouldn't necessarily be consistent. Uh, the next one is conformity and so that is making sure that everything is in the same format so that would be an example of with the W or without the W in certain situations as it relates to data. The next one is accuracy so accuracy um, making sure that the data makes sense um, for instance, the graduation date comes after the birthday. Yes, a, a person should not be graduating before they even were born. Um, and those little keystrokes um, can pop up in edit reports. So the next one would be integrity, making sure that uh, whatever rules are set forth for data are followed. And so um, that example would be first generation college students. So our office has defined first generation college students in a query stating that the student's um, parents must not have completed a four-year degree. And so if that is um, the case where a parent has completed a four-year degree and they are listed as a first-generation college student, we would know that that's an error um, in our data. Um, timeliness, just making sure that it, the data is entered and available uh, at a particular time um, that is needed. So an example would be an instructor of record. Um, we need the instructor of records um, very early on um, in the semester, you know, halfway through at the end is not the um, ideal time for instructor of records. So that would be a data quality for timeliness. Any questions? So where we are headed, um, for a long time our university has been uh, focus on a lot of just data requests and reports and almost like a reactive kind of approach um, 
but we are we are very much headed to a uh, reduction of data silo silos and um, taking a more proactive approach through new data platforms um, and we're making more data analytic informed decisions and so we, we've made a lot of data informed decisions but the analytic piece of looking at predictions and um, other statistical analyses is kind of where we're headed um, but to do that we need to make sure that the the data is um, as accurate as possible on the front end when putting it in the first time. So the importance of it is that with this new um, direction that we're headed, uh, making sure that everyone understands that our data is very much going to become a real-time data situation where um, the moment you put in the system that the Mississippi resident is coded as Louisiana, they're going to show up in our system as Louisiana. And so when looking at our platforms like Helios Campus, um, if someone is looking at states, for instance, um, that could show up as an inaccurate number just because of a, a simple mishap on a keystroke. Another one is reporting purposes. Um, as we've said earlier, we report out a lot of information and we want to make sure that the data is accurate um, on the front end. It takes a lot of time um, to go back and edit things um, on the back end. And so if we could just you know, try to get it on the front end, um, that will save us a lot of time and space. And then last thing is funding. A lot of the ad hoc reports that we get sometimes are related uh, back to a funding um, request that someone is trying to do. And so we want to make sure that we're providing out the most accurate information so um, you all can receive the funding that you are requesting. I didn't, I didn't have time to integrate my stuff in the first time. So, um, I, these are the slides in the progress. Um, okay, from a data, like I said, I just got outlined it. Um, I was going to go over the data quality management, the, the kind of things we do, the census reporting, the edit reports we do. You know how many edit reports we do, uh, what what blocks of data do we look at? We look at student states, we look at students majors, we look at you know students home address, we look at students accounts, we, you know uh, just just a general idea of the kind of quality stuff we're looking at. We don't look at everything that the student does but we look at a lot of big chunks and I don't have the numbers on this as I said I just started working on it. Um, anyway I'm going to go over a brief not too much on this uh, just give them the, the sheer volume of stuff we, we have to look at and, and, um, and, and report. Uh, and why it's not just our data, but then we ship that data to other sources, raw data to other people. Uh, that leads me to the next slide, uh, which is a review of the calendars. We run these edits. Uh, we, we tend to focus these edits basically, and I'm like I said, I haven't, I haven't written this up yet. Uh, the student data is done three times a year, and we run edits on these three times a year. We do HR data, but we really only do a full review of it once a year. Degrees awarded once a year in courses at the end of every semester. Okay, that's not very many data point times. That's what we currently do, and it's a rush. The, the, the move is to move it more uh, on, on more, more day to day, and push, push the data edited to them so it never even gets to this. In other words, the calendar, I, my future calendar will have points, but the, the new one will have basically, it's continuous. They'll have daily reports, they'll have weekly reports. Whatever works for their particular data entry needs to be pushed out to their end. Uh, so the, the calendar of when these edits are going to be done aren't going to be just when we ask for them and sit around and wait for them. It's going to be more like they're going to have to run edits or the, who's ever in charge of the data will have to run their edits weekly, monthly, or whatever to review any changes instead of constantly waiting for us to tell them what to do and wait for them to make the changes because uh, we end up being two a month after class starts before we even got a list of really who all the students are. Uh, the other thing I wanted to go over, I, I, I thought it would be good to go over in data, data checking is not just 
simple variables. Do you have an ethnicity? Do you have an address? Is that address valid? Okay. The more important thing that we do is we do cross, cross check, what you call cross checking. All right, and, and basically going to describe, basically, I'm taking this field and understanding that field and how it relates to another field. And that leads me to, I was going to give an example, because that always works better, of uh, a student's, changing a student's address. What, what effect does that have on a student? Basically, you change his address, you say, well, he moved to Alabama. Well, that changes his whole data, because if he's a Mississippi resident and all of a sudden he moves to Alabama, it, you know, that, that throws off his residency code, that throws off his uh, awards, that's, that throws off how his tuition is done. So anytime they make changes, we have to look at cross, we have to see how that affects other things, okay? Or a student comes in that's admitted, he's admitted, he, he doesn't live in Alabama, he doesn't live in Mississippi, but everybody's, but his tuition says he gets in-state tuition. These are constant changes that are made that are cross-referenced to other data that doesn't seem related. Uh, and that's part of the edit process that we want to push forward is who's ever in charge of changing addresses or whatever, they can run a thing and say, okay, I, these addresses have changed, has it thrown off anything else? Or is it, it's not just simple valid checks. You need to also look at cross, uh, other areas. In other words, you, you took a student, like I said, that moved out of state, did somebody update his residency code? You know, you got to start looking at that. I'm just going to give an example. Uh, the next slide kind of bled on the other one she had, which is, how do you do this? Okay. Um, so I'm going to adapt this one. Um, I'm moving around I, 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 just a little bit. Um, the focus on data entry is, yes, standardization. You've got to come up with standardizations. You've got some simple data flows. Um, how are you going to enter data and how you reverse that data if you have to? No shortcuts, that just causes problems. Um, ongoing, that's not on there, ongoing cross-checking. As I said, moving these edits to the, to the data owners, not, not waiting for IR to show up uh, once a semester or once a year in some cases and tell you your data's messed up uh, or inconsistent. Um, not on here is training. I wanted to add training. Uh, um, the advantage of having your stand adopting standards and having a system to check yourself is when you train new people. How do you know they're doing it right? The best way to do that is you have an in-house in quality control measure. You know, as you, 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 you hire the student to enter some stuff, and then after they get done, you have some way of testing what they did. Um, that seems to be a, a big issue here as you get new people coming in all the time. Are they adhering to the standards? Waiting for IR to show up three months later is not it. Uh, it's a catch it when it happens. Um, minimize distractions. I'm not sure where I'm going with that one. Um, and, and the last thing is to think of uh, is tunnel version versus big picture. A lot of times, especially in people's soft, you bring up a panel and you think that panel is perfect and you're not really thinking about how that panel affects other people's data. Um, you just got it to work and you're happy and you get out of it. Um, you you, you got to think more like when you put data in there like the address, can that affect other things? Can, does that change other things? And, and that's a, we have a lot of tunnel vision going on here. People go, well, my data's right. Well, yeah, your data may be right, but it doesn't drive with anybody else's data. Or you're not doing it consistently the way other people are doing it. Um, it's one thing. You've you got to kind of get to know not just your data, but you've got to get to know other people's data and how it affects you, or vice versa, how you, the things you enter affect other things. Um, so one of, the, one of the things I wanted to emphasize was you know, to think outside the box. Don't just worry, oh, I got the student's majors right, everything else is perfect. No, it's not, because now you have an undergrad student enrolled in grad classes. So it's not always that easy. Uh, but anyway, I will be more prepared. <laughs> I just needed it. This is really our website. So the IR website, um, I need to put a link in here actually to show them. But the IR website is um, available for anyone at the institution to use. And so keep in mind that the website has recently changed. So we're still in the process of, just like everyone else, making sure everything is accurate. But um, when you type in the usm.edu slash IR, um, you will come to this landing page. Um, 
We have um, quick facts here on the left is just basic snapshot information that you can see. Um, clearly it is from fall 2018, so um, that will be updated once we have um, a new set of numbers. Um, request information here on the left is where we are asking that um, anyone that is wanting information from our office to um, submit their requests from. Um, we've kind of gotten into where some people will just email a person directly um, because that's who their person is that they worked in the past for, but people have been changing in our office and uh, we don't want to overload just one particular person, so we're asking that everyone to submit this um, mock form. Um, and the one thing I do want to highlight from this is we are asking that um, a two weeks in advance um, date is highly suggested um, and preferred. Uh, and then you just fill in all the information um, throughout the form and letting us know what it is that you were wanting. Um, do keep in mind that for um, internal requests, there is not a fee associated with it, but if there are external requests such as a random um, doc student who is doing a dissertation and wants a set amount of data from our office uh, with IRB approval, there could be um, a fee associated with that um, per hour. But the thing I wanted to point out to is right here on the main page, faculty staff access. When you click that, um, it will take you um, to a internal site um, that you will need to put in your credential, your SOAR credentials. And when you do that, you will see um, a whole bunch of different folders um, that you can go to. So a lot of times what we have found recently is information that um, different schools or individuals are asking could be found right here already accessible. It's just they didn't know. Um, so if you were to click dashboards, for instance, you will see um, a variety of different dashboards that are readily accessible to faculty and staff. Um, so for instance, if you are wanting to know, um, maybe you're wanting to know retention rates, I don't know, you could click this and you could um, start playing around to see what it is that you're wanting. Um, you'll see up top, these are a variety of different tabs if you were to try to equate it to like any Excel experience you might have. Um, and so you could start seeing maybe it's that you want to know five years um, of retention of all students. Um, you click that and it will update as is. Um, you can see for this one, maybe it is that you're wanting to know specific um, school. You could unclick all these and look at just the school of ease and you could see the retention rate there. So this we found is very um, helpful for a lot of um, individuals when you're wanting to pull your numbers. And obviously if you um, can't seem to find something or you think it should be here and it's not, um, you're more than welcome to contact our office and we can direct you um, to its location on the, on the site if it is there and if not we can easily put it, um, get a request for you. Um, other things that are on here are admissions funnels, um, you can see enrollment, um, and then if you were to go back, uh, a list of the different majors and minors, uh, we try to keep that up to date as much as possible after each change that is proposed. We have different um, references up here. So for instance, this is a reference that has um, a lot of different information about IR, our IR office. And then resources here, so instructions on how to pull um, course evaluations. We do get a lot of phone calls on that. Um, that a faculty member will try to download their um, information and it's not showing up, and so we'll get that. And those instructions here can also help them. Mike, you? Yep. Yeah.
Okay, so uh, good afternoon everybody. I'm uh, Dr. Doug Masterson. I'm the Associate Provost uh, and I'm uh, in charge of a number of different things on campus or at least a champion for a number of different things on campus. Uh, and we've talked an awful lot about the information that's going into the various systems on campus and how we're trying to remove those data silos. And the instruments that you see listed here are actually uh, three instruments that we're using to actually connect the silos together so that we know in real time what's going on across the different um, data platforms uh, at the university. So I'm a champion for digital measures. Uh, digital measures by Watermark is a product that I'll talk about here in just a moment. But digital measures is a faculty-centric uh, uh, platform that allows faculty to keep track of all of their activity for their annual reporting and other things. Uh, and it relies on a, a number of pieces of information that you all actually input into SOAR and SOAR HR. So again, that idea of the data that you generate does have multiple uses and could impact uh, other um, areas, as, as Rex was mentioning earlier. At Astro, we all, um, I'm also a champion for the Platinum Analytics uh, portion of, of Ad Astra, which is helping us uh, predict student course demand and other things to try to, to uh, develop more efficiencies in our, uh, our student um, enrollment plat our, uh, portfolio. And then Helio Campus, I'm, I, I'm, I'm involved in Helio Campus, I'm not necessarily the champion for Helio Campus, but Helio Campus is an area where we are in real time using a lot of the information that you all are, are generating. So let me talk to you a little bit about each one of these and how what you do uh, impacts uh, the reports that come out of these systems. So I'm a big uh, champion for digital measures. It's, it's, my, uh, it's my baby, if you will. Uh, digital measures, if you want to think about it, again, it's a faculty-centric uh, platform, but there's a lot of information that's in digital measures that we can extract and use for a variety of different purposes. So if you look at this particular diagram, you'll see that there are many things that go into digital measures, and there are many things that we can have come out of digital measures. And from everybody in this room's uh, perspective, really the campus integrations are what are important. So we are taking information from SOAR and directly importing it on behalf of faculty into digital measures for their use. We are importing things from SOAR HR directly into digital measures on a regular basis. Uh, we are getting ready to import things from Office of Research Administration on behalf of faculty so that faculty don't have to enter this information. If it exists in the system right now, we're trying to make use of that information as much as we can. So that's what I call the official information that goes into digital measures. Now, faculty can input information on their scholarship and creative activities, awards that they've uh, received. They can also enrich the existing records. So for example, um, their scheduled teaching information goes in, but they can add to that beyond what is in SOAR and really create for us a rich record. There's a number of other types of uh, things that can be inputted. We won't go into those today. But what can come out of digital measures, faculty can generate any number of CVs that they need with the information that's in there. We can generate all kinds of accreditation reporting, so SACS accreditation reporting or individual, um, individual units with their accreditation reporting. No longer do we need to bug faculty with uh, data requests for things like accreditation reporting. If they put it into digital measures, we can extract it and use it. Faculty, faculty will be able to generate their annual evaluation reports. And we've just currently launched faculty web profiles. So faculty no longer need to know how to program a web page to get their information on the university's web page. They input it into digital measures. It, it will be extracted out automatically through an API and update their faculty web profile. So again, Having that information as accurate as possible allows us to make uh, the best possible use of the reporting features that are in digital measures. Some examples of where we're pulling information uh, on behalf of faculty in digital measures, uh, we're importing their personal contact information, their administrative data, that all comes out of things like SOAR HR, their education records, we are uh, pulling that information from uh, SOAR HR and getting it directly into the system for, for faculty. Academic advising, and this is actually one that I hear from faculty quite a bit that they'll say, you know, I know I had more advisors than the 10 that you're showing, but the fact is, is in SOAR it said they had 10 advisees. So it's very, very important that we keep that advising record up to date so that that information is correctly reflected for, for the faculty. And then, of course, scheduled teaching. Their, their teaching schedules are loaded into uh, digital measures that shows how many students they had, what the class was, 
uh, the grade distribution, all of that kind of information. They, and then faculty can go in and upload their syllabi into that or their teaching evaluations and add other comments as necessary. And we can use that information to generate a variety of reports uh, across, across campus for, for uh, accreditation or whatever the case may be. But again, Data entry, making sure that it's clean up front is, is very important here so that it gets imported correctly the first time. Uh, the other uh, platform that I, I champion is Platinum Analytics by Ad Astra. Many of you in this room know Ad Astra as our, our class scheduler, our course room scheduling uh, platform. We're using that information now to make predictive analytics on what our course demand is going to be across the university. Here's an example of, of a report that we get every week right now during this season uh, of registration that helps uh, departments and programs know kind of what the fill rate of their classes is going to be. Uh, and so what you'll see is that, and I'm just picking on natural science, it's my home, home kind of stuff. Uh, Platinum Analytics back in the early spring predicted various seats that we were going to need for these courses based on our historic enrollments based on how we did uh, last uh, fall, uh, et cetera. And so, for example, uh, they predicted that uh, Hattiesburg Astronomy 111L, we were going to need about 140 seats. Well, we only have 96 seats uh, for that particular class. So we're kind of out of balance there with that prediction. And there may be a number of reasons for that. But all of these uh, projections are based on how we set course caps. And, and many of you in this room are, are responsible for entering that kind of information as courses are being scheduled. So we want to make sure that that's as accurate as possible. We want to make sure that the course seats are really what we need, not just what the room will hold. Okay, so we want to have accurate information on that as well. And so we can get this type of information and reporting quite easily. Um, it's not just this, but we got, have all kinds of data that are coming out of SOAR uh, into Platinum Analytics and we're able to make a variety of predictions that we're using uh, at uh, various levels, like at the dean's level, et cetera, to make uh, predictions about what we're going to need moving forward in terms of faculty, staff, space, uh, et cetera. And so there's all kinds of dashboards that we have, and all of this is based on that information that you all enter into uh, SOAR for us as we, as we uh, add courses, uh, et cetera. So it's very important to have that information uh, accurate uh, as early on as possible. And then finally, just to talk a little bit about Helio Campus, uh, I call this our data pond. Um, it's not a lake yet. We're not at a point where we've got so much information in it that, that we can really call it a lake. But I like to think of it as a data pond, a big holding place where we have a lot of information that we can then use in real time. Uh, and we want our ponds to be crystal clear, right? So we need to have that data as clean as possible. This is just an example of some of the uh, things that we hope to be moved into production pretty soon. Just to give you an idea, we will be able to use the information that we're getting out of SOAR to determine uh, student success metrics, for example. Um, and here's an example of one of those uh, success trends by department. And again, having that information, we need to know uh, all sorts of information coming right out of SOAR needs to be as accurate as possible um, early on. So. Helio Campus is allowing us to uh, see in real time a variety of different pieces of, of uh, information uh, and help have us help. Where do I want to go with that? I'll figure that out later. And so that's the end of my part. Any questions? And we're right at about 31 minutes. So I think, Rex, when you get your stuff together, oh, we'll yeah. probably be around 40. Ish, probably. Yeah, I'm thinking 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. And then the definitions, when we go through those, that'll add. Yeah, so that may be, yeah, 45 or so, maybe. Yeah. So anything on my part that I need to change? Um, I mean, the point is still the same, you know, good data in, good analysis out, yep. you know, bad data in, bad data out, or no data out. <laughs>
or at least not English. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is there anything that you want us to hit on? No, I think what Rex has on his printout slides, I think, is going to be good. Okay. And once, it, once that's put in, I think that'll be really good. Uh, and I think, I think you did a good job of hitting on the fact that it's going to, you know, doing something over here is going to yeah, tunnel over here. Yeah, and, and most people don't, yeah, well, that's a problem here is, is people get tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. You know, they're so used to seeing one screen, thinking of one student, and they, they open up, they fix that one student, it goes on. They don't think, well, now, if you just did that differently than all the other students, you know, or so. Oh, I'm just going to change their address. Well, okay, they're a non-resident alien, and you just made us federal. We just made us uh, in trouble with the feds because you changed an international student to a local address. That's a no-no. So little things like that can set things off. Okay. Um, Do you feel like we need to add anything about Eric's whole world of academic? Stuff. Is there anything that, because I don't, I'll be honest, I don't know much about his <laughs> area. <laughs> I know enough to stay away. Um, yeah. I don't know. Um, they don't really have much to do with, the only people that really affect him is the registry's office and ACA people. I yeah, don't, so he doesn't uh, really what I think, if, if, you, if you want to add anything, mm -hmm. I think what we need to add in addition to whatever you want to add for him is that we, or at least I have asked that, that people not contact him directly, that they go through the DPS office for that. Because mm -hmm. Eric was getting bombarded with requests left and right about setups and this, that, and the other that, that got kind of out of hand. And so working that through the DPS office, I think, has helped shield him from that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's given a a lot of what he was asked to do really should have been vetted by somebody. Yeah, uh, he was getting. And, and so by going through the DPSs, they can look at it and know whether I need to be looped in on a decision. So I, I don't want people leaving here thinking that, oh, <laughs> let me just put in a, a change on something to, to Eric. Okay. And, and you could tie that in with your, when you were going over the, 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 the request website where you type in your request, is yes, you can contact somebody, but you're right. If people get overwhelmed, I get an email from somebody that I did something from three years ago. It just doesn't, you know, I, it doesn't get put out there. I'm, I might forget it. I might be on vacation. So you might want to put it in with that area about contacting and stuff. Because we do, I mean, and that's a perfect example of where, you know, using one of us as a back door is just not going to work. You know? Yeah, so I would love to just streamline everything through those yeah. requests. Well. But, um, um, so yeah, you could probably tie it in that, that part about, you know, um, but yeah, they were using Eric as a back door, and it wasn't working. And there's some things that they changed that, oops, this really ends up being a requirement change, which should be vetted by the councils. Yeah. And so, you know, we need to know, um, at least I need to know, I don't know that everybody needs to know, but I need to know before changes are made. Yeah. So I, I was just thinking, you know, because we kept talking about tunnel vision and, and how we're going to break down the silos, but I don't, I don't think we addressed at all our future vision of how we're going to help that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, so there was conversation about creating a committee, right? A helio committee or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. So you might want to maybe incorporate some of that. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that that's coming forward. Because the whole idea of Helio Campus being real live data, I mean, pe people are going to need to know exactly what Rex was talking about. You know, oh, I made this change, but that's going to affect all these other things. That can really mess some things up in real time if people don't know. Yeah, yeah. And I can talk about the different trainings that we're going to start slowly starting to do, and I had tossed around the idea of like a, a data newsletter or something. Just keep them uh, engaged with our office on a regular basis and not until <laughs> it's negative yeah. with an edit or something. Cool. And so, you, you know, Rex, you also might want to mention, now that it came to me, when you're talking about your error reporting, the error reports don't always re reflect accuracy. 
right? I mean, an error report of, oh, they received their degree before they were born. Yeah. Even if we swap those numbers, that doesn't that, that may mean it's it's valid data, but it may not be accurate data. Yeah, in our case, that could be wrong. Yeah. 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 So, you know, don't trust an error report to mean everything is everything clean. is clean and yeah. accurate. And, and and the other thing is, in yeah. So I think people need to understand that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't check it. I can't check it off. Yeah. You were born in 1966 and received your first degree in 85. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> but it may be completely wrong. <laughs> uh, oh, you know, you may have been born in 67 and got your first degree in 92. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, the other thing is, an error report is not necessarily, it, it, as I tell them, you know, I tell you something that's inconsistent. It, it's more of an anomaly report. It may be right. We have an algorithm. We have two people that were born in the 30s that still attend the university here. And every semester, IHL sends me that every semester they're enrolled, I get a thing from IHL going, they're outside the range. And I'm like, yeah. So sometimes an error is not an error. It's just, it's just, it's an anomaly. It's something out of the way. But you need to go back and double check it. Mm -hmm. You know, like in this case, every semester I go and look up that guy. I've got the name memorized by now, so as soon as I see his simple ID and his name, I know it's the same guy. But I still double check it every every semester I do it. Uh, so sometimes it's just an anomaly. It's not a, it's not an actual error. Right. The other thing is enough anomalies come up. Uh, yeah, we need to know that because that may be something that's just normal now. You yeah. know, um, it's normal for people born in the 30s to be taking college right now. Uh, yeah, but. Uh, like one, uh, one, one anomaly that just drives us nuts is you can actually attend this, a transfer student can attend um, a co two colleges at the same time. So when people ask me, what's the last college they went to before they transferred here? There is none. <laughs> I said, okay. I said, you know, we've came up with a formula to try to figure out the best one of the two. But at some point when all things are equal, it's a flip of the coin. You know, you have no idea. You know, okay, they, they went to state and they went to a junior college and they had three hours and they went the same semester. Which one are they last from? Well, does one way factor more than the other? I don't know. I mean, you know, at that point, literally, whichever one has the lowest number goes. I mean, you know, we, it's a flip of a coin. It's alphabetical. But um, that's, you would think that was weird. At one point, I always thought that was weird that we'd have all, I thought it was bad data. No, it happens a lot more than I thought to the point where we stop reporting it after their freshman year. So once the transfer, or after the transfers come in, after a year, I stop, I, we stop looking at it. Because it's just more anomalies that we know exist. Yeah, double check it the first time they're here, but after that, you know, that's just what it was. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm looking to expand the mind a little bit. Like I said, I, I, I want to figure out, to convey to you guys the high points I, I think I need to What cover. about, do we think that it's important Maybe that's not the right word. Beneficial for everyone to know all the different, and I say all loosely, the different reportings for like iPads or IHL, so they see like we're reporting out degrees awarded, like all of those different. You know, I'm talking about completions, institutional characters, like all the iPads stuff, and or do you think that? All these people will know. No, no, they don't know what he knows. Um, I think it would also, if we're going to go down that path, I think it would be important not to just tell them that we report, but tell them why it's important that we report. So why is it that we report to iPads? Mm -hmm. Why is it that we report to, we have to report this information on each other? Now, I think the answer there is, to me, is obvious. But I don't think to these, I, I don't know, necessarily know that the data entry level folks mm -hmm. understand that IHL gets together and discusses funding based on right. these metrics that are reported to them. Right. Because I was just thinking we, that could be how we connect the dots. Because at one point I said how data quality is important for reporting. But if I'm telling them there that it's important for reporting because it's affecting their funding, funding for the university and funding for students, then maybe it'll click that. Yeah. Well, I've, in, in to add in that arena, it's not, a lot of people don't even know that we actually send data to IHL. I don't, I don't, I don't report numbers to IHL. I mean, sometimes we do in a, in a hurry or they just want a, a snapshot, 
but we actually send them the data right out of SOAR. We put it in their format for the most part and send it on. Mm -hmm. I mean, the data they enter ends up at the, at the state legislative level to do numbers on. You know, you, 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 you put in that student is, is, is a non-resident alien, that'll go all the way through the system until they come out the other end and we get funded or not funded based on data you enter today. You know, yeah, we, we have to put it in their format, but it's their data. I don't, I don't, I don't enter data. Um, I don't do something, you know, I, I may, I may, like I said, filter, but yeah, that might come up at the same time. But you know, I think, I think that what they enter ends up at the state level. A perfect example that I think is even more local that Bill Powell used to talk about was back during the day when we had the old census day. I don't know how we're doing it now, but, you know, at a certain day, we looked at the, the enrollment, and that's how money left from the general fund to all of our auxiliaries. Housing, mm -hmm. physical plant, athletics. And so if faculty didn't go in and put in the correct not attending rosters, we were not only sending out money from our general fund based on those numbers, but we weren't getting any of that money from those students because they weren't here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. You know, you were, you were getting a hit in the fact that they weren't generating tuition for us and the hit that we were giving money to other auxiliaries based on those numbers. And so I always went and hit on, hit on, uh, tried to impress upon faculty. That's why the non-attending rosters are very important early on in the semester because it really does impact how, how many dollars flow out of the general fund and, and into somebody else's account. And that number, we need to give athletics every dollar they deserve, but we don't need to give them another one. You know? <laughs> and in the past, we've been given them. I mean, that, that, that's a real example. Of, uh, yeah. You know, if, if we're not generating the right data, we can't make the right decisions. Yeah. Um, at the uh, that's, yeah. Uh, ethnicity is another one that we've had to get on to them about recording their ethnicities. Because a lot of things we do nationally get reported by ethnicities, and if you've got a third of your students that you don't know what they are, it just throws off all your numbers. You know, it really, uh, you know, so a lot of things are determined by that. But for a long time, they would, uh, the number of unknowns was growing, so it was getting, it was getting bad. You know, we were getting hundreds, of, hundreds of students a semester that I didn't know what they were, um, and there's no reason for that. We can guess. I can change the student's ethnicity based on a guess. That's perfectly allowed. Uh, now, if that student doesn't like it and they want to go and change it, that's okay, fine. But uh, that's another case where you know it was easier just to skip that whole. But it, it started snowballing fast. Um, well, I gotta get on to a kind of another meeting, but I'll uh, download that and put it on my YouTube channel, hidden, so you all can just. View it if you want. <laughs> I don't know about it. Well, I mean, it's, it's good. I, I review it. I know where I said, oh, I don't know exactly what I want to say there, so now I'm, I'll know yeah. what I want to say. And the, um, the 